Welcome, everyone, to another, another edition of Suplexes, Scores, and Save Points. Your home for all things wrestling, sports, and video games. As always, I am Ryan, and with me again, Mike, every time, it is my brother, my partner, my co-host, Nathan. The force is strong with EA. Uh, yeah, we had some uh, news drop yesterday um, that's got a lot of the people pretty damn excited. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, but um, I will say some of the Star Wars games are really fun, so this should be good. Uh, we have news coming out of EA that Respawn Studios... Is, have announced that they're going to be having three new Star Wars games in development. Uh, this is the same company that produced Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, we're going to have three more games. Um, one being a strategy game, which I don't know what how that actually could be. I'm not 100 percent sure what that is. Uh, it'd be like it would be like uh, it'd be like Starcraft and some of those games where it's you know, move move some stuff, build some shit, move some stuff over, defend your base, that kind of shit. Um, they're also going to be making a first-person shooter, um, which, you know, is pretty basic. Just like every other game, honestly, it'll probably just be, you know, first-person shooter, which, if you play as a, uh, if you play as a, I, I don't know the Star Wars the people, but the people in the white, if you play as them, does that mean you can't hit anything? Yeah, the stormtroopers. Stormtroopers. Like, if you play the stormtroopers, I mean, you never hit anybody. Or, <laughs> and then also, um, they're making a oh, yeah, sequel go ahead. to, uh, uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, the one they just made, the one I announced. Yeah, they're making a sequel to the game they already made. So, uh, obviously, no dates. That game long. was kind. That game was kind of decisive, Ryan. It played like a Dark Souls game where there's a lot of blocking, a lot of parrying that you had to do, and so a lot of people didn't like it that much. Well, I guess they liked it enough to get a sequel. <laughs> um, I didn't mind it. It was hard. It was hard, but I didn't mind it. It was pretty good. Um, um, EA, with their Star Wars games, obviously... Uh, Disney and LucasArts did uh, break away from EA a little bit. They, they they put that license out other places. There are other people going to be making Star Wars games. And uh, there's others that are in, in development that are maybe like, I think there was one that a company said they're going to make that's going to be like open world Star Wars, which sounds insane. And, um, but, so we're going to get a lot of Star Wars, and it's not just going to be EA, which might be a good thing. Yeah, obviously they they did not announce when these games would come out, but I would assume it'd be next year, or possibly one or two at the end of this year. If they're already in development, that's a good thing. Um, they said they're in development, so we could see one or two of them come out at the end of this year. But I would say more towards twenty twenty three is when we're looking at these games coming out. Right. Uh, but hey, you know, Star Wars making a making a resurgence. Yeah. Hey, from one property that you uh, don't really care for to another, um, we got uh, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, uh, the Harry po open world Harry Potter game, uh, finally got kind of, not a release date, but a release window. It says summer of this year, so it's going to come out this year, so sometime in the summertime. Hasn't that game been delayed like twice already now? Yes. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, it's, it's expected at this point. These games are going to keep getting. Um, you going you to play that one, Ryan? Probably not. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I've been playing a bunch of weird stuff lately. Some stuff I never thought I'd play, so maybe I'll give it a shot. You don't have to play as Harry, Ryan. You can, you can make your own character in oh. the Wizarding World. Well, there we go. Well, then that just sold it for me. 
Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Um, and you can you can travel outside of Hogwarts too. Oh, well, there you go. Is it open world? Yeah. Oh. Um, Should be interesting. Oh, all right. Uh, what else we got? Um. Well, from that open world game to another open world game, well, semi open world as we found out, uh, Pokemon. Arceus comes out uh, in two days, well, one day if you're listening to this, and uh, there's already been reviews out now, Ryan. Some good, some bad. I honestly think a lot of the bad reviews are for people that don't really play, play Pokemon games that much. So they may have had a little high expectation. <laughs> But uh, they say that it's a damn good game from the most part. Uh, it takes Pokemon to the next level and that it's, you know, not exactly open world, right? It's kind of more like Monster Hunter where you you got different, more like you, you have like a hub world and then from that hub world you go to other areas and it's big open, big open spaces, but it's not, they're not all connected, you know, it's like. Go from he's like you portal to one, portal back, portal, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what do you think, Brian? You think this game's gonna be good? Uh, it's hard to I don't know. Open world games, they're either they're, 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 these open world games, man, they're either really good or they just seem to be bad. There's uh, it's hard to nail down an open world game um, and actually give you the freedom to be able to do what you want to do and, and hit it good. The ones that do it good are really good, but then you get the ones that are just absolutely terrible. So I, I don't know. We'll see. I hope it's good. But uh, we'll see. I mean, we could have another, uh, you know, cyberpunk on our hands. You never know. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably try to review that one. I don't know if I'll have the review in next week, but if not next week, the week after. Yeah, I mean, I've heard nothing but good things from the Pokemon game, so I would assume it's going to be good. I mean, everyone's saying it's probably it's one of the best, if not the best, Pokemon game they've ever made. So, um, well, Nathan, do you want to? You want to jump on the on a train real quick? Sure. It's time to jump on the speculation station. Choo choo. Let's jump on that speculation station. Choo choo. Um, speculation station rolling in here on the video game podcast score uh, save points. The Rock has come out and said he is making another video game movie, but he won't say which franchise it is yet. Um, but he said we're going to be bringing one of the biggest, most badass games to the screen, one that I've played for years. So, Speculation Station, Nathan, what video game franchise are they bringing to the big screen? Well, let's hope to God it's not Madden. How can you do a Madden video game? I don't know. I I assume that that The Rock plays a lot of Madden. All right. He did say in the same interview that he has always been a big Madden fan. Um, obviously rumors are running rampant. Uh, we've got people saying it could be GTA. Um, I think to stick with the theme of all his movies, where he wears you know the gray shirt and the gray pants, let's just do a, um. A, th- a fall or a good old pitfall movie. Pitfall. You can just wear the same outfit he wears in every movie he ever does, and then uh, keep that streak going. Um, he said they're going to be doing it um, this year, so I have no. I idea. think. I think okay, so he's bald, right? Oh boy. <laughs> I think it could be God of War. 
See, a lot of people were thinking God of War or Gears of War. I, yeah, Gears of War. That'd be a lot like that uh, Doom game or Doom movie that he made that did not uh, work out too well. Yeah. Um, God of War could work out. I could see him being Kratos. That is a very good possibility. I think the three that would be, because he said badass and. I think God of War, Gears of War, GTA are the three that would be significant. If it's anything other than that, I don't know what it could be. That's a badass. Yeah, game. I don't think. I ain't gonna lie. I don't see The Rock playing any of those games. But I don't see The Rock playing a game. How does he have time to play a game? I'm just saying. I don't know how he would ever have time to play video games, but. <laughs> um. What the hell? Sorry. Um, but yeah, so that's that's speculation station coming. Um, oh my god. Every freaking one of these things has an ad on it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm interested to see. Hopefully, eventually we'll get an update on what game that's actually going to be and the new movie. Right. Uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking of a Sony property, Ryan, we had uh, Sony accidentally uh, leaked out some stuff because a lot of people think that it was hinting towards uh, hinting towards uh, some more backwards compatibility on the PS5 because some people were seeing that PS3 game where it usually said uh, if you looked them up that actually are on the PlayStation PlayStation Store uh, you don't get a price. You can't buy a PlayStation 3 game on a PlayStation 5 or 4 right now. Uh, you can only stream them through the PlayStation Now. But, apparently, uh, some people saw for a short period of time when they looked up a third PS3 game, there was a price there, Ryan. Making people think uh, maybe with this new... Uh, this new project Spartacus that they're working on, maybe uh, maybe PS3 games and maybe PS2, PS1, PSP, maybe you'll actually be able to buy them on your PlayStation 5 and download them instead of streaming them. Huh. So what do you think about that? That would be, uh, I mean, they got to do something. Uh, because Xbox is continuing to roll out all these uh, great things with Game Pass and all this, so that they're going to have to do something to keep people, you know, around and let you purchase PS3 games would probably be the best way to do that. Um, and making that backwards compatibility thing back. <laughs> I don't understand. I know that technology has got to be hard to do. I get it. But I don't understand how we don't have backwards, backwards compatibility on all these new consoles. Well, there's a lot of backwards compatibility for PS. I mean, there's quite a few PS2 games, some PS1 games on the PlayStation on the PlayStation Now. But problem with the PS3, there's some of those too, but not very many because it was just the architecture of making a game on the PS3 was way different than any other console. It's kind of like the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn still hasn't had any way of really, like any good way uh, of replicating what the Sega Saturn did. Like there's no, there's no emulators online that are really that great at emulating Sega Saturn. Yeah. And just like PS3 is going to be. So, I mean, if they can pull it off, that'd be great. But I just don't know. I don't, I, I think it may have just been a glitch. I don't know if this is real because They'd have to do a lot of work, and I don't know if Sony's willing to do that much work to get those games on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, we'll see. I wouldn't get my hopes up too much. Yeah, uh, it is Sony after all. Speaking of Sony, I got another Sony. Um, we have a report, as we, as we all talked about, we all know now Activision was sold to Microsoft. And the old, you know, a lot of people are asking about Call of Duty. A recent report is stating that the next three main Call of Duty games will release on PlayStation. 
Yeah, um, it goes it goes in uh in line with what they released before they released that. Uh, they said that they had a contract with Activision for uh, I think it was like three or four more years, yeah. like three more years I think. So they kind of have to fill out those. They they because the Microsoft deal doesn't go through till next summer, and they kind of have to abide by those deals, you know. Yeah, they did the same thing when they acquired Bethesda. Um, it honored PlayStation's time exclusivity agreements for Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop. Um, so they they're obviously have to abide by the um, contracts that exist. You can't just override those contracts when you purchase a company. Um, to relate it to wrestling, that's like when WWE purchased WCW, they still you know didn't get all the contracts because those con- they still signed contracts, so they didn't get all the wrestlers that were you know. I didn't want to use their contracts. Kind of the same thing. So, but after that, I would assume after the next three, they're probably going to go. Uh, I would assume micro, they're going to go Microsoft exclusive. Yeah. Or just charge PlayStation an exorbitant amount of money for them. <laughs> so, yeah, and if you go by, and if you go by Call of Duty standards, because there's usually one a year. So that would mean one this year, one next year, one after that. So 2025, right? Probably be the first one that's exclusive to Xbox. Well, they said there's one coming this year, um, and then there's two projects that come out next year, so that it might be next oh, year. Oh shit! So it'll be twenty. Oh shit! Yeah, they're gonna do two next year. Is, is according to the current uh, expected launch dates, they're gonna come out in 2023. So that means one of them. That means means one of them is probably a Black Ops game. One of them is. It says one of them is uh, a new iteration of. Warzone, so a free to play Warzone type of game. But two, there's be one this year that's a real game, and then another one next year that's an actual game, and then one free to play game. So, I uh, hope PlayStation fans enjoy Call of Duty because you may have it for two more years, and then uh, we'll never play it again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I it's crazy. Um, as we know, I mean, they already made Starfield, um, which they, when they purchased Bethesda, they've already made Starfield, uh, Xbox Series X and PC exclusive. So it's already happened with one game that was supposed to go to PlayStation. So I could see them doing it. I mean, I'm telling you, you want to hold the edge over the competition, just hold their money, I'm, hold their games. I, I'm telling you, man, what they're going to, they're going to say, they're going to say, Hey, Sony. You want all those games? Put our Game Pass on your system. Yeah. That's what they're going to say. They want Game Pass everywhere, man. All right. So, Brian, we played uh, Windjammers 2. We did. And I also played a little bit of the arcade mode. Um, yeah, me too. What'd you think? I'll let you go first and then. Well, uh, single player mode is uh, hard. in arcade mode. What? It's very hard. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard. it's very hard. Impossible. Um, hard. <laughs> but uh, uh, single player mode, there's not a whole lot to it, which, you know, going into Windjammers, you don't really expect there to be like a story mode or no. to expect to have a lot of unlockables or nothing. It's basically straight up, just like if you played it in an arcade, you play against nine nine opponents one at a time work your way up win the win the, win the trophy uh i beat it on easy uh on normal i only got to the third person i cannot beat the third person so and that's, that's as far as i've got on arcade mode uh so i did not try easy i went straight to normal because i ain't a bitch no um <laughs> wow no, um, I went straight to normal because I was like, easy is going to be too easy. I want to win another challenge. Lost the first match. So uh, <laughs> um, I ended up getting, I think, to the third or fourth person, same as you, and then it becomes insanely hard and impossible. Uh, I tried it with like four different characters. I couldn't get any of them past the fourth person. So it's very hard. It's very fun, especially when you're playing with somebody, which is what we did over the weekend uh, on launch day when it actually came on, on Series X. We played it. Or series, whatever Xbox, um, Game Pass. By the way, it is free uh, on Game Pass. So, um, 
very fun to play with somebody else. It's very that's, fun. That's basically what this game's made for. It's not really made for the single player. It's made for online leaderboards. It's made to play against people online. It's made to play against people who can't, uh, local co-op. It's a it's a multiplayer game. It's not it's not made for single player. Yeah, it's very fun. There's up uh, you know, there's different shots you can do. Um you can throw it. There's I didn't know Nathan, did you hit X? You can actually bat the ball. You can hit it. Didn't know you could do that. Ah. Um you can hit it. You can also just lob it. Uh there's a couple of different shots. There's special shots. Some of them are impossible to stop. Uh <laughs> so that's very fun. Uh, we you can have some pretty cool rallies back and forth, which we did. We had, we went back and forth for about five minutes <laughs> without scoring. Super fun game, and you know, even if you pay, if you have a Switch, it's like twenty bucks on the Switch, which isn't bad for this type of game that you can get hours of enjoyment out of even playing single player. Um, because it's fun and it is it's hard if you go up this normal or even hard. Um, it actually is pretty challenging. Uh, so I I like this game a lot. I played it last yeah. night uh, for about two hours, I think. Um, still couldn't get – I tried it for two hours straight and couldn't get past, like, the fourth person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I uh, definitely highly recommend this game. Definitely. Oh, it is very fun. Uh, it, it is a definitely a game everyone should check out, especially if you have a game pass. It's worth the download. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, uh, next next Wednesday we're gonna have a review of uh, of uh, the Extraction game. What what the hell is that game called? Resident Evil or Resident Evil Rainbow Six Extraction. Yeah, Rainbow Six. I couldn't think of what I knew it was Extraction. I couldn't remember what the freaking. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. We'll we'll have that reviewed next next Wednesday. We'll I've, we're gonna play uh, that over the week. I played a little bit of it. Oh, did know. you? I, I don't know. Um. It feels way. It feels like this game, and I haven't played too much of it, so I'm not gonna give a huge review. But it feels like this could have. This could have just been like DLC for Rainbow Six Siege. Um, but again, it, it could get better. I've only played a little bit of it, but it's very similar to Siege, with it being a different enough to where it feel like this could have just been like a add on to that game. Um, but right. I haven't played a full game yet, so I haven't played too much into it to get a feel for the game. So after we play it together, I'll have more thoughts. I'm going to play by myself, and I don't know if that's a game you're supposed to, you know, playing by yourself is probably not as fun. Right. All right, Nathan, do you want to know the PlayStation February PS Plus games? Yeah. Um, those have been announced. We've got Tina, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands in March. Um, Wait, what? Tiny Tina. Oh, sorry. It's Tiny Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. Oh, okay. It'll be free. Um, I thought that brand new game was going to be a PlayStation Plus game. I was like, whoa. Um, EA Sports UFC 4, which has been free for... Microsoft um, Game Pass subscribers for about a year and a half now. So, just want to throw that out there. Um, and PS5 console owners get Planet Coaster. So, not a great lineup this month. Um, I might enough, check out a couple. I have played, I have not played High and Tina, obviously, because as a PS, that's a PlayStation exclusive. Um, but UFC 4 is okay. I played it. And Planet Coaster is okay, too. But Planet Coaster is a game that is it's originally a PC game, and it's got ported over to console, so it, the phys, like the controls are a little wonky on it because it's supposed to be used with a mouse. And so using it with a computer with a you know, right. controller is a little bit wonky at first. It, it's a little bit hard to control. Um, but it's if you like Roller Coaster Tycoon, I mean, it's basically that game. Just updated, so. so you know, it's a good game to waste some time in for a little bit, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Steam Deck officially launches, Nathan, in officially a month, February twenty fifth. We are officially one Ooh. month away 
uh, from February from the Steam Deck. Um, Valve confirmed that those... Yeah, were- I will- Oh, what? I probably won't pick that up because as much as I wouldn't mind playing some of those PC games that I've never got to play and to play them in handheld mode, that would be pretty cool. I can't drop that much money down on one of those. Like, they're they're going to be like 800 bucks. Ain't happening. Um, the 64 gigabyte uh, is 399 The 256 gigabyte is 529 Yeah, 64 yeah. 64 gigabyte. That ain't going to get you very far. And the 512 gigabyte is $649. And then obviously Woo. there'll be additional perks coming uh, at, on top of that. Um, but if you did sign up for it by email, uh, you'll receive an email the day before. Um, and you'll have 72 hours to purchase the handheld or it will be given to the next person. So there is a limited supply. So if you did, if you do want one, uh, you better look at your emails uh, on February 25th, um, and then you have stayed in two hours to purchase it, or you you are going to miss out and have to wait till they actually start making more. So, and we're yeah, and that dude, that'll probably time. be a, that'll <laughs> probably, that, that might that'll probably be around Christmas time. And with how uh, serious consoles have been this year, uh, good luck if you don't get it on launch. Yeah, that'll probably be about Christmas time. Before they get them more out. Yeah. Um, a couple more little uh, news things here. The official Halo TV series trailer, the next trailer, will air during Sunday's NFL AFC Championship game. All right. But we'll get another look at the Halo TV series. Um, should be interesting. I, I, the first trailer was okay. It didn't really show much, so I'm interested to see how much they show in the second trailer. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it looks good from the first trailer, but again, we didn't see much of it. So I want to see it. I want to actually see some more footage. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, billion dollar Microsoft couldn't afford the Super Bowl commercial. They went with the AFC Championship game commercial. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, they might have one on the Super Bowl too. They just, you know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, let's see. Anything else? Um, um, we don't talk much about streaming, but there is Twitch is rolling out a new way um, for streamers to make money, which is actually pretty cool. They're calling it the reliable. They're calling it a, a new feature will offer a reliable monthly income in exchange for a specific amount of hours streamed. Um. In a new blog post, uh, Twitch said that the Ads Incentive Program, which is the name of it, will present personalized offers to select streamers at launch. In exchange for a flat payout, streamers will need to stream a certain number of hours while running ads. Um, The goal is simple, to help you earn a more predictable monthly income through ads with no ceiling on earning potential. The more streaming you do, the more money you'll make. Uh, which means you won't be, you know, relying on your, uh, you know, subscribers and people paying you money to make money. Uh, Twitch is going to do it for you. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad that they're finally getting like kind of like a full time, you know, reliable income going for these streamers. Because um, for some of them, it is a full time job. So um, that's cool to see. I'm glad to see uh, Twitch doing the doing the right thing. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go into some of the releases coming out uh, this week. Um. <clears throat> Man, we got a lot coming this week. Um, we have got Vaganti for the Switch, Swan Chernobyl Unexplored, The Longest Road on Earth, which Yeah. 
PS4, PS5, Switch, and Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Wanderer for the PS4. Circuit Superstars for the PS4. Uh, Kogan, Sword of Rewind for the PC and the Switch. Hotel Life, a resort simulator uh, for everything. Comes out on the 27th. Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger IX2 for everything. Super Onion Boy 2 for the Xbox Series X and the Xbox One. Um, Uncharted, yeah. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection comes out on PS5 January 28th. So that is going to be probably a big one. I don't know. I mean, it's technically just Uncharted Four. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not. I don't really understand. I saw that announced, and I was like, "There's already a collection on the PS4. Why do we need another collection?" I don't know. <laughs> um, Pokemon <coughs> Legends Arceus comes out January 28th. Active Neurons Puzzle Game for the Xbox Series X. Thea 2, The Shattering for the Xbox One. Rec Record of Lodos War, Deedlet and Wonder Labyrinth. That's a hell of a name. Uh, for the Switch and the for the Switch. Um, and Cow Turing for the Xbox One. That is the end of January. And we'll do the rest of them in next month, next week. We're almost to February already. Oh yeah. All right. Um, I think that might be it. I don't know if we missed anything. Uh, well, uh, yeah. There's a there's a couple. Um, so with the uh, new update for our switches, I don't know, Ryan. Did you did you have you played your switch in a while? I did do the update, but then I had I mean, I played a little bit, but. Well, with that new update. Uh, it did something a little surprising, Ryan. It kind of fixed uh, some stuff in the Zelda Ocarina of Time on the N64. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so maybe, hopefully that's a good sign, and maybe they're listening, and they'll start fixing all of the games. And maybe they'll start adding more games, too. Who knows? I highly doubt that, but, you know... A little at a time, right? Yeah, I can't ask for everything at once. It's got to, you know, slowly but surely we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's nice of them. I have played Doctor in a time on there. It's pretty good. I've also been playing a lot of Banjo-Kazooie uh, that just released. Um, and it plays great, I think. Uh, the control scheme actually works pretty good for it, I think, so... I highly recommend you, if you've never played that game, to go out and play some Banjo. Banjo Kazooie. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, and then we got to talk a little bit also about Switch Online as uh, the next game announced is uh, uh, Oh, man, what was it? After Banjo Kazooie. They announced it. Um. Oh, Majora's Mask. Zelda, Zelda, yeah. Majora's Mask. Which I have not played that one yet. So. There you go. You're gonna have a chance. I heard it's kind of a. I heard it's a kind of a dark take on Zelda. Like it's a dark Zelda. I heard Adora's, like, uh, Adora's Mask is one of the best ones, so a lot of people seem to like that yeah. game. Yeah, I mean, it's not as good. I'm honestly, for, for my lot case, it's probably not as good as Ocarina of Time on the 64 million. Everybody's good. Oh, when you say real quick, that could be pretty exciting here, Nathan. And then we'll end this thing. According to a new report, uh, 
Apple could be preparing its own video game console. Um, an industry insider is claiming that Apple is poaching engineers, specifically from Xbox, to help create its own video game console. Video game console. Yeah. What do you think about that? The Apple I boy. I don't know. <laughs> I think that if they, yeah, I think if they make a console, it's going to be, yeah, I don't, who knows? it may be VR, who knows, we don't know. I, I just don't know, I can't, I, I can't see them getting into the, not this late, getting into the console wars. Not now, I mean, everyone's had, you know, like jumping into it when there's already for four, eight generations in. <laughs> I mean, um, well, not only that, but I mean, we're to um, the—I mean, we're almost to the point where Microsoft's ready to get out of the consoles and go straight to like Netflix for gaming, which is probably what a lot of them are going to end up doing in our future. So, don't really doesn't really make sense to jump into the consoles right now. I don't know why. What what kind of console? I would assume it it would be VR. That's the only thing I can think of is they're just going to do a VR console. Yeah, I, I can see that. Because I can't see them making an own, their actual home version console to rival the PlayStation or the Xbox. To rival. No way. Yeah. Ain't going to happen. No. But there you go. Uh, very, very fun episode this week. We covered a ton of topics. Um, if you miss our scores podcast is actually out on youtube and whatever you listen to podcasts uh you can listen to that when we talk to the nfl nba mma ufc um all that fun stuff and coming up saturday morning 6 a.m eastern time our big royal rumble prediction show as well as covering uh the rest of the pro wrestling landscape So it should be, uh, that should be a very good one. Follow the YouTube channel if you want to watch these podcasts instead of listening to them or just listen to them on YouTube. And you can do that as well. They're uploaded the exact same day as they go up on uh, the podcast site. Um, if you want to follow it, the YouTube, TikTok, uh, Twitter, it's all at Sabri ENT uh, to give us a follow there. And that's going to do it. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you. For Nathan, I am Ryan, reminding you to always score if you can, save if you must, but always suplex when necessary. Later.